Okay, I think we're we're there. Okay. Since we do have a quorum, maybe one of the first things we can do is take a look at if anyone would like to make a motion to approve the uh, minutes, which I published for Peg because she was out last week. So if I have a, anyone for the motion. So this is Mark, I'll make a motion. Okay. Second. Second. All approved. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. That's a. Okay, so we went through the formalities of the meeting. I think the key things. Uh, the minutes had some key points in it, so also some misspellings as it normally is accustomed to my writing. Uh, but there are some interesting items in there. The uh, project financial funding. We invited Jody and Mike yourself too to give us an in a view of what it's going to look like moving forward with you know the monies we're looking at and potentially funds that are in the in, that are, we can achieve within the town. So I don't know, Mike, if you want to start with it or Jody or how we want to do this. I will defer to Jody. With her I was going to say, yeah, if, if you want, do you want me to put the deck up, Mike, and then we can walk through it? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think the, uh, this is really looking at the the um, uh, debt obligation, Phil. So this okay. would not get into bringing in potentially other funding sources, but it gives you a sense of if we have to borrow 100% versus yeah. different scenarios. How do we get to those different scenarios? That'll be other funding sources as we get into it further. So this is more looking at the, the borrowing scenarios and, and what that means to taxpayers. Good way to look at. Okay, so it's popping up now. Just bear with us. Um, okay. okay. So let me just see if I can do. Yeah, I see it. Look at that. Okay. Um, I'm just not sure how to make this. You guys can see the whole slide though, right? Yes. I just want to do the presenter view. Okay. Um, okay. So again, senior center expansion, one of the things that we were tasked with was just looking at the the debt obligation that we would secure in order to fund the project and what that would ultimately have as far as an impact goes to taxpayers. Um, so we had put this deck together to really talk about the objective of tonight, and that's really to provide the committee with a baseline understanding of how that calculation comes to be and get everybody a greater understanding of what that looks like, um, and then share some of the obligation scenarios um, that we leverage our financial advisor um, at Unibank to sort of project and give us an understanding of, depending upon the financing needs and the method used, um, again, what that impact would look like, depending upon which direction the committee chooses to go. Mm -hmm. So the formula is, um, it can be overwhelming, but once you understand it, it's pretty simple. Um, so in order to understand the impact um, per household, we first need to understand per thousand, per hundred thousand dollars in debt to secure we would take that number and then divide it into the total assessed value of the town. Right now, $1.4 billion is the assessed value of the town. So in order to understand what $100,000 of debt looks like as it relates to the overall valuation, you do a calculation. Um, that calculation translates here to the 0 0.00. 068097. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have to add a 3% surcharge for the CPA. Ultimately, gives that gives us the factor of 0 0.0701, um, which results in seven cents per hundred thousand dollars of debt secured. Um, so once so that's the formula to get our rate, if you will. And then we take that rate and we can multiply that by um, two factors. Number one, how much are we securing in debt? So per hundred thousand dollars, that's what it's going to cost. And then we multiply that again by the household value. So whatever the property value is, whether that be land, real estate, it's a residential um, property value that then gets multiplied again 
and that becomes your dollar value against the taxes for the calendar year. I'll give you a little more context through some examples um, okay. that will make more sense. So again, the annual taxpayer Im impact we're looking at is the rate calculated, like I said, um, per thousand dollars of property value. This is the tax recapitulation sheet, which is the DLS form through the gateway that all of the assessor numbers go through and all of our um, all of our financials go through with the DOR. But again, if we look at this in terms of say a $650,000 home value, we can multiply the factor that we determined, which is the 0 0.0701 times whatever loan repayment amount we're looking at. So what is our yearly obligation to the loan? The amortization figure um, in that calendar year. And then we can multiply that by the value of your home. And that essentially gives us how much in taxes each taxpayer would then need to, um, would be obligated for. Now this slide is a little teeny tiny. I wanna see if I can make this bigger. It would be a little tricky, but for example, um, before we, we look at this, this whole thing is one scenario. I'm gonna explain it for just a moment. But when we talked to our financial advisors, we said, you know, we don't have an exact building cost yet. Um, you guys might've gotten a number that said, okay, around $10 million, but mm -hmm. that that's a starting point. And you might shave this off, you know, add that on, um, phase out the project where you're gonna do a phase one, two, and three, and really isolate the cost to a certain dollar amount now, and then maybe look to do some more later. So he gave us um, a six, eight, and $10 million um, idea, right? Is As far as securing debt went, and then he gave us a 15, 20, 25, and 30 year principle and what that looked like. He further broke it down and said, here's an equal principal amount um, or here's a level debt amount. And so all of those sort of scenarios are ways that we can finance this. And by breaking it down the way that Mike and I have, you really get an understanding of Number one, how much are we looking at securing? And within the footprint of, let's say you guys decide, okay, let's 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 go for a debt exclusion of eight million dollars. What's the tax impact on that? And then you can drill down, and we can work together on what is our debt service overall as a town, and what puts us at a level debt service, um, which basically means we're carrying the same amount of debt as to not impact the tax uh, burden up or down. Um, as debt rolls off and you secure new debt, that's considered keeping your debt at a level, level debt service. So that being said, those are some decisions we can make later once we get some more numbers um, and we get more information on timeline and when we're gonna be looking to secure debt, um, then we can kind of play with it a little bit to see what the tax impact would be above and beyond the existing debt so we can really get an idea um, about you know the actual tax impact. So these are hypotheticals um, mm -hmm. as of right now on new debt in the amounts of 10 million, 8 million, six million dollars. You can look at the slides you know at your leisure to kind of see those. but for illustration purposes, we want to show you at least one um, in what that would look like. So again, 10 million dollars, mm -hmm. 30 year term, equal principle, we're looking at these bands here. So $45 impact tax impact on an annual basis for a home or, or a piece of land, um, but a property value at $100,000. Um, we've illustrated, you know, all of these bands all the way up to a million so that, you know, residents, should they look at this, they can kind of guesstimate where they would fall um, within those brackets. So again, that's that's really the the view that we can have um, mm -hmm. to understand, you know, the the impact to the end user, so to speak. Yep. So, oh, go ahead. No, that's that's a good that's a good uh, view. To look. it gets us to the point of being able to take a look at what the impact is to the end the end yep. person. Yeah, and Phil, just just real clear, it, this is directional for a point in time right now. So, mm -hmm. these these would not be, you know, numbers I would put in stone saying it's going to cost this much because that'll all be rethought out as we get closer to actual costs and the timing as Jody said. So purely to give us a sense of, you know, which scenario we think we could probably 
work through the process with. Yeah, I, I think I understand that too, Mike, because by the time, when do we occur the debt? When and what's the, you know, the borrowing that borrowing cost at that time? I guess that all has factors. Yes. Uh, and hopefully it goes the other way instead of the way it's been going. Now you mentioned something, Jody, about debt mm -hmm. exclusion mm -hmm. to keep it level level funding. Is there mm -hmm. any ideas or views of what's happening there in the presentation of how our um, debt ex exclusion? So, yeah, so any moving? any debts like this would be a debt exclusion um, that would need to be voted at annual town meeting in order to be able to fund. And right. um, the scenarios, I guess, I just just to go back to what Mike had said, the things to note around this are exactly what Mike had said. We talked at the beginning of the presentation um, that the calculation is inclusive of the total assessed value of the town for that fiscal year. As everybody knows, that fluctuates and it usually fluctuates in the upward direction. So based on that calculation, um, year over year, the tax impact will change based on the valuation change. So you're gonna have a bigger factor to divide by um, so that's why it's you know that that will change slightly but just to understand it's not going to be i'm making this up 45 dollars and 20 cents on a hundred thousand dollars from now until 30 years right it's going to be the valuation the town valuation a hundred thousand divided by it to get you know the per hundred thousand dollars of debt um so that'll that'll fluctuate a bit but not you know not anything we can predict but we can say with some level of certainty that assessed values in town um, tend to go up, not down. Yes. Um, again, this is sort of a, a summation, which I think is a, a nice slide. Mike had put this together um, mm. that really gives you sort of the layout of 10, 8, and 6. And again, I know this is a little bit tiny. Um, I'm happy to post yes, the, yeah. the presentation publicly, but if, if you guys can see you'll see the residential home value from a hundred thousand all the way to a million. And just to give an idea, again, tax impact on a $10 million loan, you know, uh, for a hundred thousand dollar house, 250, 500, 750, and so on and so forth for each of these um, debt obligations kind of gives you a nice summation of what the tax impact would be year over year at a 30 year um, mm -hmm. note equal principal payments. Okay, and what is, again, what is the average, or what is the mean, I guess, I'm not sure I'm looking for the average or the mean value today in Menden? You know, that's a great question. I probably should have been prepared with that answer, um, but that would be something I can search that answer with our assessor. Um, she'd definitely be best suited to answer that question. Okay. Um, and again, we have five different property classes, so we're really lo looking at, you know, what our residential um, rates are and we can I can circle back with that answer. Yeah, and Bill for the tax recap, uh, you're talking about the the median or the average home value. Yeah. Bill? Um, they use 651 in our November hearing for the tax recap re recapitulation okay. hearing. So that's sort of a number I think we, is a safe one to target. Okay. 650. Yeah. 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 So it's some yeah it's somewhere between the 500 and 750 then. Yeah, that's yep. what we used in our examples um, okay. throughout when we talked to Gene earlier, um, you know, about these calculations. So yeah. that's, okay. yeah, that's kind of what we used. I remember seeing that number. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, now, if we look at the timeline, Jody, as we move forward, uh, uh, I was talking to Mike briefly, but uh, I talked to Mike Petrovic and John earlier this week or at last week actually and uh, they'll be prepared to come next week to present to us the cost and the estimates so we're going to get our numbers we're looking for from them so that uh, will be at next meeting our next committee meeting sure if i can get anything out sooner but so assuming we get those numbers that begins to set the stage for what are we going to go for to the town mm -hmm. for request of funds Obviously, we're going to negotiate. Can we take something off? Is there ways to pare it back? So we'll go through that little exercise, I'm sure. But that's going to really give us a number that's gone through a professional estimator. And hopefully we're now in, in a range that we're now driving a number to go to the town meeting with. Mm -hmm. And once and we I mean, do... I, I, go ahead. So, so if you think 
I agree, Phil. And if you look at this, you've got three bands, right? Sort of target landing spots in front of you on this slide, as an example. Yep. So I think Mike will give us an idea of what the true cost will be. Say it's 9.9 .9 based on his original number, right? Yep. But more importantly, he's going to give us a um, a breakdown of what's driving those costs. It'll allow us to start to bring that 9.9, .9, say, more into the 8 million range if we think that's the target we want to hit. Mm -hmm. And then we can also layer in potential grants, you know, that Mark and team might be working on or looking at things like you mentioned ARPA, stabilization, things like that. So the next thing will be how do you bring this into the level we think is a reasonable ask in terms of a debt exclusion? So one of the things we should start thinking about is what do we think the target should be? Should we be shooting for six, eight, ten, somewhere in between? What do we think is reasonable based on you know some of these projected directional costs you see here it's interesting if i look at if i look at other municipalities similar to us and upton's the best example right now they put their community center in and opened it up in 20 2022 i think maybe 23 but that came in at 12.4 12.8 million uh cost i mean that was the what they went for for the price uh, I'm sure, and they negotiated. They, that's after they worked it. There is a library in there, so that's a little different. Uh, it's fifteen thousand square feet versus twelve and change. I think that we have. So when I look at that benchmark, I think we're somewhere around between the eight and ten million dollar range to be able to achieve the center size that'll grow. We, we'll take care of the needs for a period of time that's reasonable, and also as we do. The five we had expansion areas on it so we could 10 15 20 years from now expand out so i'm th i'm thinking that it's somewhere between you know the eight and ten million probably closer to nine i don't, I don't know that we're going to get much below that unless we radically des change the design of the building and i'm concerned about reducing the the structural part of the building making it smaller uh, yeah i mean i think i agree i think the only the thing that I'm curious to see is the finishing costs of the of the ground floor. Yes. That seemed to be a chunk that might give us some uh, wiggle room. I agree. I agree. I think there's two areas there, the ground floor and maybe a creative way to uh, put put the infrastructure in for the garage, the plumbing, heating, and concrete, but don't build it right away. And I mean right away because maybe we'll have a parallel effort doing that. Uh, and that would save somewhere between three and four hundred thousand dollars, maybe, or maybe two hundred fifty. So there are chunks like that we could take a look at. But you're right. Once we get those numbers, we can begin to look at that and then come back to you, Jody, and say, okay, here's our numbers. And back yeah, to I, you. Oh, go ahead, sir. No. And the other thing is back to the select board saying, okay, now once we start to squeeze this, for your point, what do we have in ARPA or wherever else? stabilization funds that are available to be proportionally assigned to this project or not and maybe we go for the whole the whole thing and i think we can lay it out in a way phil that says here here are options you know this is the cost and this is what if we do full debt this is the cost here are some opportunities that we've seen as a committee to reduce that debt obligation Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be up for FinCom, the select board, then ultimately uh, the voters to decide where, how do they want to um, attack this thing. That's an interesting way. Has anything ever been presented that you know of to the t all the way through the town with multiple options like that? Or does it usually stay at the select board and FinCom? Um, I would probably say that when it goes to the floor, there's generally a single solution with an explanation as to how that number was derived. Okay. But it might be able to be done in a way that if uh, certain aspects are not, um, some of these things, these motions could be changed on the floor too, in terms of what the, you know, if we compartmentalize it. So if, if, if people don't want to go for A, they may go for B and somebody might need, need to change a motion on the floor. In terms of the, the 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 actual numbers, and as I look at the at the say seven hundred fifty thousand dollar number, we're looking at uh, you know sixty seven dollars difference between eight and ten million dollars in a, a tax increase. 
So, I mean, it gets back to the earlier point. I think if, pe if people are committed to invest into the senior center, the delta difference between the eight and 10 is not that, I don't want to just say that, loosely, not that great. Yeah, and there, there will be other things, other considerations for potentially for debt. I mean, the school will probably be coming for something in this town meeting, it looks like. Um, and I would probably say, even from a capital planning perspective, Phil, there's some things that could register. Um, and I'm thinking highway, honestly, right now, given yeah. some of the things that are popping up there, there could be a, we bounced around the idea of a debt exclusion to get a jump on that pavement study, as an example. So we'll have to see how those things shake out. I think what we get to focus on is presenting a, um, a cogent argument with um, funding scenarios that people understand and can either get behind or not get behind. Okay, I, I'm somewhat concerned with more more asks collectively. You know, the people may say, uh, "I have enough. I don't want to do this." Yeah, I mean, to me, the big one's going to be the school, given that they're starting to frame a five-year plan. That whether or not it starts in FY25 or 26, I think that's still being kicked around, but it's not a small ask for sure. No, I'm sure it won't be. And if MISCO is involved with that, it's going to be a big ask. Yeah, MISCO is kind of, they've got two different ideas going. Uh, so, so a lot like of that too. School, has hmm? the school asking for a new building at this in, in this coming annual town meeting or just? Uh, I would. I don't think so. I don't think they're going to talk about a new school. In fact, with most of the state processes, the state's going to look to uh, revitalize versus build net new unless it's feasibly, uh, if it's not feasible, Lonnie. So they always try to push that way. And some of the grant funding probably would not be for FY25, but there's a number of things that they see as a, uh, I, I've seen numbers upwards between eight and 10 million potentially in, in the first year, but I don't think they're going to ask for it all. I mean, their total five-year plan is probably closer to 40 million. You know what I mean? So that's a they've got a lot of a lot of roofs being replaced. Let's put it that way. OK. Jody, can you uh, speak at all to any debt that's falling off like for for sure. the schools? I mean, I know that's been mentioned like a few yeah. times, but. Uh, yeah. So there are there are two debt obligations that actually fall off in FY 25, which represent about three hundred and eighty three thousand dollars. Um, so again, when we talk about level debt service, you know, there is an opportunity to leverage that drop off in FY25 um, with new debt. Um, and I think, like Mike said, we just have to be careful not to overcommit just ourselves, um, but knowing that the school is also going to have needs that are going to flow down to our community as well. So while there's an opportunity in FY25, I think looking at our, our capital um, outlook in the le in the next 10 to 20 years as it relates to debt, there are going to be some slow drop offs. Um, but again, we just have to balance that well and um, make sure that we have the a minimum impact, you know, to taxpayers. So mm -hmm. thank you. I, mean, I think, Jody, I think we're about just over a million in this fiscal year. And then we to your point, we dropped down into the 700s in That's FY25. Right. Yes. And then I think in 31, I think you get the next significant drop off. So like six years later, down to like right. the 200,000 range. If we take new no new debt on, this right. would obviously change that oh, cool. you know, trend. Right. And, and, I, and I guess um, the debt that I inherited prior to my role is, you know, they, the folks that were in charge before um, structured the debt in such a way that we should look to structure the debt going forward is as things drop off, um, we can leverage our fiscal advisors to uh, create principal payments um, that can fluctuate, you know, year to year, but that equalize our, our debt service. So in other words, it might not be your typical amortization schedule, you know, or principal only um, or interest only up front and, and on the back end. There's lots of different models, but I've already had conversations with our fiscal advisors in that if we have our debt service, they can sort of plug in the numbers um, and the, really the law states that you need to draw down the loan um, as quick as the duration of the loan, not any longer. So as long as your payments um, allow you to pay it off in the same period of time, then you're good. 
So even if you have a $600,000 payment one year to make up for some debt that's fallen off, and then it reduces to 500 the next year, um, and then maybe levels out, but they can work with us to to work on a schedule that that makes sense for the town. Okay. And Elena, just when Jody and I were having these conversations, this is where I put my hand up and said, you know what? I think myself, speaking for myself, maybe for the committee, we'll leave that to the financial team to figure out how best to structure <laughs> the debt. This slide is, uh, that's how I can get my yeah. head around, like $36. Got it, you know, <laughs> on an $8 yeah. million. Dollar. <laughs> okay. So Mike, Mike and Elena, I have a quick question. Um, as Jody said, we have a debt drop off. When we did the police station, we had debt drop off and we figured out what that value was. So we knew the debt was going to drop off. There's nothing you can do about that. It drops. And then there's actually essentially a tax reduction. So we had that number figured out what is that total number. And then that's when we plugged the police station into it to figure out back then, you know, because we didn't sell it as we sold it as your taxes were going to be level. We didn't sell it in like this is how much you're going to pay the rest of the time we have the police station. We we focused it in this debt's dropping off. If you vote no, you're going to get a tax reduction. If you vote yes, it's staying the same. It's level. So proportionately, even though your taxes go up, the debt is proportionally going to be the same no matter what the amount is. So have you, I mean, can we look at what that number is? And then as a board, have you guys um, talked about or decided um, that no matter what happens, you're trying to capture that debt so we don't have a drop off and then it's an uphill battle afterwards to try to get that debt back? I think the easiest time to get it would be right when it drops off. To, to sell people, they're going to stay level. If it drops off and they realize that savings, it's going to be harder to get it later on down the road. Right. And that, I guess, that was that was what I was wondering about. But um, we haven't talked about it as a select board yet. I mean, outside of the fact that I think folks understand, like I think Mike definitely understands sort of the the dynamic, Dave, that you're describing. And I think when Jody and I have talked about it, we we kind of want to you know, capture that debt. So it's sort mm -hmm. of a more of a, it's more streamlined. But mm -hmm. in, in the reality in my mind, it's going to go up. I don't, the amount of debt that's dropping off is not going to, and Jody, I'm out of my skis on this. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't see how we don't see, uh, we're mitigating the increase by absorbing that debt, Dave. I'm not sure we're going to keep it just leveled at the whole way. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I just didn't know what that number that value is. So if we're dropping off 200 and change or 300. Um, what is that in proportion yeah. to like a 20 year loan? Like if our $8 million loan, what would the, what would the, what's our output for each year of those 20 years yep. on the debt, debt schedule? We can say, I mean, we, yeah. we built, we can build, we probably have that in the spreadsheet actually, yeah. Jody. Yeah. So we, we haven't, we have yeah. it. We just haven't articulated it, I guess. Yeah, so so this is basically a summary of the amortization schedules. It would be like 30 pages of scenarios. So this is really a summation um, of that, but we certainly have more um, detailed information available as well to kind of take a peek through. Come on, sh show them the spreadsheet if you have it. Just show it to them. So a lot of numbers. Just based on that chart right there that we're looking at, right? And Maybe you yeah, can so even send it to me later on. Um, one of, well, sorry, Lonnie, yeah. but... No, sorry, just based on based on this sheet right here, right? And I'm, I'm just on my phone, so it's hard to see, but it looks to me like <clears throat> at 10 million, right? Uh, where is that? 10 million is on a 25 year is 490 on a million dollar home. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. 365 on, on, on a 750. So, I mean, if you're looking at, now again, that, that's on the higher side. So if we're looking at the six, the five, between five and 750, let's call it, let's just call it a 300 number in there, right? Yeah. That where it, your taxes are going to increase by 300, right? Well, maybe that's that's the key. Right. Line, find it, it will it, it'll be off. it'll be some some number south Hold of on. that a little I, bit. I, I, just let me step through it. I'm with you. So it's going to go 300 if nothing happened. Right. Yes. Right. Right. So three 300 if if we didn't do anything and and we had no debt coming off. But say it's a hundred dollars in debt that drops off. Well, on, on that 
type of house. Now we're talking it's a two hundred dollar increase. Exactly. So yeah. right. So I, these numbers aren't ridiculous. I mean, unless I'm missing something here, but to be asking for that for a brand new building for seniors, right? And and one thing to also keep in mind in here too, right, is seniors don't always feel like they get the their bang for their buck, right? And that's why and, and they're they're we constantly struggle with that piece of the seniors aren't, you know, some people will need to move because they're they're the taxes increase so much. So there's there's that piece, but at the same time, now they're getting something, right? They, this is a this is a, like a tangible thing that they have their senior center, and that money's going towards that, and not just schools or highway or or parks that maybe they don't. I think utilize. it's reasonable, Lonnie. To your point, I think yeah. it's very reasonable, and I I lean more towards the eight million slide. To be honest, as I looked at the numbers. I felt eight million to your point line. It was even, you know, kind of. I didn't. I didn't pause when I looked at this. I said, "It, you're getting something. There is a cost, but it seems more reasonable than." Um, right. I, I just okay. overall, I just think it makes sense. You know. I just wanted to make sure I was reading it right because those are really the numbers that are gonna that people are gonna look at. Right. We can talk about all the different scenarios and everything together, but at the end of the day, what and and if we have a. a, right. a if we have a building that's 10 million, we didn't even get grants or anything like that. Worst case scenario, yep. that it costs us 10 million. And I would definitely, my suggestion would be that we build this thing and be done with it and, and not phase it only because it's just going to get more expensive five years down the road, right? Okay. So, and they have to come and ask again. I just, I feel like that number is totally achievable for right. us, especially if, if anything, any way we get it down, we're just going to, it's just going to be that much better. And that's my two yeah. cents. And Dave, just to your earlier point, if we did something where you see a tax impact for here, but then you see a net impact, which takes into account a smaller number because we're factoring the debt debt drop off, that's kind of the visual you'd want to see, right? Yeah, I think that would be helpful to people. It helped with the police station, right? Um, okay. And then I think circling back to Lonnie being, you know, everything's expensive. I think, uh, you know, Phil as a chair and, and myself as a vice chair with this committee. You know, we were really put together to come up with an option by May, and I think that we should come up with a singular option um, because we don't want to confuse people. I think they, we're the committee that should drill it down to the best option with Amy and and everybody on it. That you know, this is what we really need and present it in a strong fr front. You know, publish it, get the numbers out there, and I think the board, um, your job would be to decide what your priorities are. Um, you know, I know you mentioned you you have a lot of them. Uh, Mike, but it would be up to you guys to decide what should go forward and what should be most important right now. I mean, I would I would push for, as Lonnie said, the buildings are going to keep getting incrementally more expensive. Um, the police station went from a million dollar building to a six million dollar building, um, and we got less building for six million dollars. Um, I know the road work's important and the school's important, but um, you know, road work maybe we look at percentages what's going to be more expensive down the road. You know, because if we kick this can down the road. Um, and we could have kicked another one that was going to be cheaper to deal with down the road. This one's going to definitely get more expensive. Yeah, Ten years I mean, from now, this is going to be a $20 million building. So, it's yeah, not, no question, no not, question from my perspective, Dave, given what I've seen in terms of some of the the, the capital improvement uh, things that have come through that we're collecting for this working group we're forming, mm -hmm. this is still, this would be top of the list in my mind, yeah. you know, because I... The other things can be managed that I've seen. This is one where, you know, we want to target a debt obligation at the right time, which might have been two years ago. But right now, I think the spring's probably looking promising in terms of rates and things like that and what's going on out there. Yeah, I think we're still in a window of time right now that we really need to take advantage of. And, and yep. I mean, I wouldn't have asked to be on the committee if I didn't think it was this important. I think this is a singular most important building to, to put forward right now. I really do. It's long overdue. Yeah. And I just so folks know, I think this as part of a capital discussion on the select board meetings is going to continue. It came up last week. Uh, last meeting is going to come up tomorrow for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so it's front and center from for, from a discussion standpoint. So I think to your point, Dave, we're going to uh, I think it'll be remain a top priority and then we'll just need to put together the right story to present to the board in the next probably. 30 days, I think, Phil, mm -hmm. to get yeah, to the probably. board with sort of an uh, more of a that singular idea, maybe not with final numbers, Dave, yeah. but yep. this is what we're doing. Yeah, probably I makes think, sense. I think, well, we need to get it there in the next 30 days because we're talking about then into February and we're going to need March, April 
to socialize and meet, spread the word, get ready for May, and finalize all the presentations and make sure we answer all the questions. Yeah, and, and a lot of it should be parallel too, Phil, right? Not everything has absolutely. to be sequenced, right? Absolutely, it's parallel. Yeah. Absolutely, all of it, a lot of this is going to be parallel. Okay, uh, uh, Jody uh, and Mike, thanks for the effort to pulling this together. And I think with the numbers that we're getting next week from the estimator and our architects, I think we'll be able to hone into that number we're looking for. And I'm going to, at the end of the meeting, we'll ask for a committee meeting in one week rather than the normal two cycle. We might be in that cadence for a little while until we get through some of this heavy lifting. But uh, next Tuesday, uh, we'll have the architect and John come down and present their details to us. Yeah, great. Good. I just want to thank Jody for making the, making this make sense to me. So I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that this is quite helpful, Jody. Just put the, to Lonnie's point in context, right? Okay, if we're down to three hundred uh, a year tax impact, and mm -hmm. maybe we get a hundred off of some other things, we're talking about fifty dollars a quarter. So you can take that down to a very manageable piece of money that right. people have, and people can make that decision on fifty dollars a quarter. Right. It's but it's striking that balance of of being transparent about how the numbers come to be, you know, and then yep. making it consumable all the way down to here to say, OK, this is this is what the end result is. So folks can um, not be overwhelmed by it. So. Yeah, that's the key thing, because this has been a mystery magic number for me anyway. I wasn't sure what the impact was. This helps quite a bit. This is quite good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jody. It's very clear. Anytime. And will you be will you be uh, sharing the slides? With us. Yes. Yeah. But, um, they're on SharePoint right now. So if you Great. think it's beneficial to share with the select board, I can do that after we we get off the meeting. What? Uh, yeah. And the committee, yeah. if you would. If the yeah, the subcommittee. committee for sure. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And Jody, thanks for the uh, advice on how to process uh, vouchers. Oh, <laughs> no problem, Phil. Anytime. <laughs> okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any more around this topic, folks? I think. I think until we get some numbers, uh, we go from there. Dave, any other thoughts? Okay. The next uh, topic item we had was uh, we had three quotes. Or we had one quote from uh, Jim Sullivan and his organization, Gary Aaron Allen. And he came in with a proposal of uh, fifteen thousand three hundred fifty dollars to do the uh, preliminary uh, site engineering. And uh, at our last meeting, we said we should do best business practices and go look for additional quotes. And Lonnie and Dave went off with a mission to go try to find some more information that we could use in our decision process here to decide who we want to do the engineering work. So I don't know, uh, Lonnie or Dave, you want to give us an update on your findings? And maybe Delaney, if you're still with us. Yeah, I'm here. Go, uh, but uh, Dave, if you want to go ahead, that's fine. Uh, sure. So Lon Lonnie when, um solicited a quote. Um, I can pull it up. It's from a local company in Milford. Um, we're both uh, familiar with the company. Um, they were able to put something together for us. I went out and still tried to solicit two other companies. Both of them were too busy. Um, they didn't want to take on the work and they couldn't get it done in the amount of time. Um, I did have them review the original quote, um, not the quote, but the actual scope of work. And the only suggestions they had made that, you know, in the future, um, since some of the stuff was bid out, we might want to actually look at the original people who do it because you're always going to pay up charge for a bid out. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing. Part of this quote that we have is um, G and H isn't doing everything in house. so. Um, I'm sure they're not going to give it to us for the cost of what it's costing them. Um, and then uh, that kind of shows in Lonnie's quote. Um, Phil, do you, did everybody get Lonnie's quote or was it just? I don't think I distributed it, but I can sh I can ship it out as you show it. Yeah, if you want to ship it out to everybody. Um, let me see if I can get it on here to show or. Let's see. Hang on. Let me have. More. All right, I got it up. I guess I don't really know how to share. Is there a way just to share a? There's a share button at the top, right at the. I'm at my computer. 
You are at your computer? No, I can probably. I was going to say, if you I, want I to just share got to my DNL, computer. I was Oh, please, I might have it here. That last year, I'm back. Uh, window radio. You guys can see that? What's going on? There we go. Can you hear me? Yep. You can see a calendar. See my calendar. Looks like a calendar. For sure, I don't. Is that me confusing everything? So that should be should see it now. I'm stop. I gotta stop sharing. That was me. Did you see uh, Mike Tomlin there? <laughs> oh boy! I'm a Pittsburgh guy. I'm following him. <laughs> now maybe you can share since I stopped sharing, Lonnie. Okay. There you go. There we go. Okay. Okay. So what we have here, uh, scope of services is they're gonna perform the soil level evaluation, deep test holes and percolation testing. This is for one day of soil evaluations, uh, exclude local board of health fees, prepare soil evaluation forms, 900 bucks. Um, this excludes an excavator for digging the test holes. Um, even if they had to put it in, I, th I think that um, they're wondering if we could use the town one, if it's available. Uh, all the conceptual designs that uh, the information that we need there. Research deeds, property line information for conceptual design. Online GIS data will be used. Combined with the soil testing information and the other available information without ground survey topography of the site. Uh, review the zoning bylaws. That's great. Uh, you, they're going to meet with the team uh, to go over everything. <coughs> uh, work with the architect to prepare any concepts that they need. Um, Discuss the plans with the team of revised, finalized conceptual plans. Meet with the team, town departments that are needed. Uh, revise the conceptual plans, fee 6500. Uh, item three, environmental. Uh, this is an old orchard. Oh, so this is the sa uh, soil sampling and groundwater to be done while item one is being performed. This will save some funds, excludes the cost of extra. Okay. Analysis of so soil and groundwater samples and minor 21E first phase report findings, 5,600. Uh, did he give a total in them? No, the total comes in at $13,050. Okay, you added all those up? Yeah, the nine, the 6,500, 6, and the 5,650. So that's okay. 13. That's, that's about 20. $2,300 $2, uh, less than uh, gear errors. Okay. For the same kind of work. The question I have, Lonnie, have you worked yep. with uh, these guys or uh, Dave? I have. Okay. Yep. No, they're very good. As a matter of fact, they're so quick history. Uh, his resume is also uh, 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 was sent along with it. Um, I can put that up. Uh, yeah, it's rather lengthy. So if you just share that, it, it's yep. here. Um, so Mike Dean and uh, and uh, Peter Lavoy, they're just two, uh, they're partners uh, in this company, DNL Design Group. They both uh, they're both formerly Garrier and Howland employees. Uh, that's their history there. Um, and Mike Dean was also the town engineer for the town of Milford from 16 to 22, which you'll see there. Uh, from 87 to 16, he was with Garrier and Hallman. Uh, okay. I don't have Peters here, but you know, there's he he has a very lengthy resume. Uh, as well does as well does Peter. Um, so he's very familiar with municipal engineering, obviously was the town engineer for quite some time. Uh, all of these companies are Garrier and Hallman is a great company, DNL is a great company. We're not gonna go wrong with any of them. So I, I'm going to abstain from voting only because I, I do business with Gary Aaron Howland uh, on, on two levels and I've done business with DNL on, on a singular level. So I'm going to just, like I said, I'm going to abstain. So I can only say that both companies are great companies. Okay. Uh, 
And Lonnie, from the standpoint of uh, you had both quotes, it looks like the, from reviewing what I reviewed, it looks like they're providing the same same stuff, if you will. I, I believe that yeah, it's it's what we what we were looking for is for is a pretty standard package uh, at this initial phase uh, and. Uh, when I did talk to Mike about it, he was very familiar with other communities that have done the same thing. So okay. they they know what they're doing. Um, like I said, both companies know what they're doing. I can't. I there's no. Yeah, I would okay. recommend either one. Okay. Uh, so what we're achieving here is we're saving the town uh, potentially twenty three hundred dollars, uh, which is money well saved. Uh, um, the, I have the a only question. Phil, can I ask a question, please? Certainly. This please. Is, um, is Mike Amandalia present tonight? Because uh, I see somebody with a phone number, but I don't know who it is. That's Amy. Amy's oh, that's on. Amy. Okay. She said I should know her number by heart. I don't know. Blocking it out, Amy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, all right. Because I was wondering what his opinion was. No worries. <laughs> I, I wondered about um, the difference in cost where it came in, because I know with the first quote, it was broken down. They were um, subcontracting for the environmental testing. So I guess I was just wondering about like where where the difference is coming in. It does look like to me and Dave, you can confirm possibly it's possible that uh, they have uh, the end that the, the, uh, DNL is doing that in house, or even if they are doing it outside, their their pricing is different. W whether it's through another vendor or, or who, but they've they they've made it look like it's it's at least in house. Yeah, yeah there's like, no disclosure in there that they've like uh, G and H did a disclosure that they were using OHI engineering. Um, there's no disclosure like that, so I imagine DNL is doing it themselves. Yeah, if you look at the three different phases, uh, Alana, the Phase one uh, with uh, Gary Ayers was twenty four hundred dollars versus the nine hundred, which is the soil, uh, which is the performed soil valuation. So there's a big chunk there. Engineering conceptual design is fifty six hundred dollars from Gary Ayer and sixty five hundred from DNL. So they're a little higher there. Soil boring and environmental analysis. The big difference there is that uh, Carrier is seventy three fifty, and uh, the same for the in the DNL it's uh, fifty fifty six fifty. So there's where the difference is in the first two areas. Thank you. So they appear to be doing the same things. The only difference, the, the minor thing, was the Board of Health paperwork, and but I'm not sure what we have to file there. I'm not sure. I think Gary was going to do that, but it can't be just more than a fee, I would suspect. Yeah, so there's just, sorry, what was the question again? The question was, uh, the only difference that I saw between the two quotes, you know, quick review, Lonnie, was I think the board of, preparing the Board of Health of applications uh, was going to be handled by Gary Ayer. And then I think in the document from DNL, uh, the local board of health excludes the board of health fees. So the, I, I'm sure our board of health fees can't be too much. Oh, I shouldn't say that. No, but what do you say? It excludes the board of health fees because there, there's no fees. We don't. We're not going to pay the board of health fees. So the, yeah. the fees would be waived. Okay. 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 So that's the only thing. If I look at you know the two documents. Side by side, that's the only thing that jumped out at me. Yeah, they should exclude the town fees with all the PD stuff is all excluded, even though the company was doing it because we'd just be paying the company to pay the town again, which is yeah, yeah. ourselves. Which, yeah, all makes sense. OK, so. Uh, I, I've, I'm i for, you know, trying to save us a few dollars here. If, uh, I don't know if you want to discuss it as a committee and see if we want to move forward, but I, if we have equal value saying both these companies are good and we're reputable and we work with them, Let's save uh, twenty three hundred bucks. Yeah, it was my recommendation. I don't know if anybody wants to put a motion and go forward with it, and then we get this ball rolling. Just a quick vote. Just sorry, just a quick note on the motion. We are fully remote, so let's be sure we do a roll call vote tonight. Okay. 
Yes. And uh, Phil, I have used DNO once before, so I want to disclose that. I don't do business on a regular basis with them. I use them to do um, the septic at my house. So I paid them. They have never paid me anything. So I just want to disclose that just to make sure in case anybody brings it up. I have no no business dealings besides I just used them before. That has nothing to do with anything. They have the best available of the price. And just to clarify, so there there were no additional bids. I know you you were looking at additional companies, but there were no. No, no I no, tried to, there was I no tried to third solicit one. two okay, um, people who you. formerly worked at Andrews. They wouldn't, they just don't have the time or the effort. And they did look at them and they, they recommended I call OHI, which I CC'd Phil on. Um, I did reach out to the uh, principal over there, but they um, declined to do any work with us at this time just because they had given a bid to G&H and they didn't think it'd be proper to to bid against them. So, yeah. but they said they would be interested in the future if we ever did any work um, to send an equal bid out and they would bid on it too. Well, I guess I'm looking for a motion to uh, save the town $2,300 and look at DNL Design Group as the selected vendor for services. I, I don't have a problem with making the motion, but uh, you know we have Mike A on our committee for a reason because this is what he does for a living, the construction and everything. Um, I, I don't know anything about what you're talking about, so I mean, I'm going to leave it to the, I'd like to leave it to the experts. Is this something that we could uh, get an opinion from him and then vote on it like tomorrow or something like that? We could get Mike. You, input. Could, you could make the vote contingent on Mike reviewing, you know, That's giving feedback. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. That's exactly what I'll do. I'll make the motion contingent upon Mike Amendolia to take down. the lower bid to save the town money. And Peggy, I don't know if Lonnie wants to or I can. Tomorrow, one of us can reach out to Mike and go over both everything with him or Phil, if you want to. I don't mind doing it either, so. Doesn't matter. I mean, since well, you've already worked it, Dave, why don't you carry this one? All right, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get a hold of him first thing for you, Peg, okay? Perfect. Thank you. You're okay. Welcome. I'll so, second that. Thanks, Elena. All in favor? Aye. And roll call. Oh, you wanted a roll call? Right. Who said they wanted a roll call? We need well, one. So Phil votes yes, aye. Elena, aye. Peg, aye. Percy, aye. Lonnie? Penny, abstain. Abstain, that's true. Mark? Aye. That's it? The that's motion it, carries. With Mike's review. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, not a problem, Peg. Good suggestion. OK, so once we do that, we'll. Uh, Lonnie, since you have the connection with DNL, you want to connect me with them or do you want to drive this to get this to uh, an actual program once we assume that Mike is. No, nope, uh, I'll, I'll I'll introduce you through. I'm just going to reply to the all to the email introducing you, and then you can just take it from there. He's okay. just going to want to really probably work with the architect, and then uh, you know there'll be some on-site stuff he'll schedule. Okay, and then uh, we'll have to schedule something with the highway department for uh, backhoe if they need one, or I could borrow my. I could use my Kubota for how deep they want to go. <laughs> okay, the. Uh, that one covers that one. Communications. I don't know if Tom made it this evening. I don't think so, Peg, but did you have an opportunity to speak with Tom? Actually, actually, we had a meeting planned today at the Senior Center at 1130 uh, um, with Karen um, Slattery Mead and Tom and myself. And the Senior Center was closed due to the inclement weather. And so we had to postpone the meeting. But I think um, if we do meet next week as the committee, and we have the actual figures. I think that's going to give us uh, a better grasp of which way we have to go. We know we have to get the message out, and we, we will do that. But having the actual figures will be a lot more helpful. And the, what Jody showed us tonight was was very, very good. It's, cause to me, it isn't discouraging. No, it's not discouraging. Did you say not discouraging, correct? Not discouraging. I, I'm taking the notes tonight, Phil. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, 
Yeah, well, when I did my uh, punctuation and grammar editor, I was only I only made a 58 point grade, 58, so I didn't do very well. <laughs> the uh, but you want to give the the committee just a brief minute on what you're looking at from communications, things that were talked at the uh, COA uh, board. Uh, Council on Aging. Do you want to just give them a quick update? Of sure. what you and well, most of you were there. Most of you were there um, for the meeting, the last meeting, that two meetings ago that was held at the senior center. We understand that we have to be united in our message. And the most important message is that we have outgrown this building. That's the most important thing. They have to understand this building is not suiting the needs of the seniors. And it certainly won't in the future if it's not doing it now. And so we know we need a united message and we do want to meet with many groups, especially the groups who are currently using the facility because we really want to get them on board. Now, um, Amy, myself, uh, and Tom, and I think Diane Howell was also involved in the conversation. We were talking about at the Council on Aging meeting, the names that what we would like to call the center. And we're really kind of, we want the word senior to be in there. Yes, it will be a community uh, uh, place as well. We were thinking along the lines of having the top floor mostly where the senior center would be. And then the second floor at the bottom where the food pantry is, is to have that those rooms accessible to the public, the lions, the brothers of the brush, the brownies, the Girl Scouts, you know, whoever, whoever is going to use the building. Um, so that was our discussion. We have not agreed on a name. The only thing we've agreed on is that the word senior should be in it. We want the seniors to have ownership of it. Okay, uh, anything else? Anybody have any specific question? Okay. And I think I'll keep writing. Okay, and I think the other thing that was talked at the Council of Aging, and some of these members weren't there, a lot of us, but uh, was talking about reaching out to these groups that use the meeting and use the facilities we have today and get them on board with our plans, see how right. they use it, see if they can optimize it more. So mm -hmm. that's more uses for the community and the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts and the Brush and uh, lines can all carry our message forward too as we go into the town meetings and look forward to trying to get this through town approval. Well, we're and planning sure, on individually yeah. or in a group meeting with these groups, you know, having a meeting with them and explaining it and hopefully have the diagram, the, the build, what it's gonna look like and we'll have, we wanna have facts and we wanna be able to answer the questions that they ask. Yeah. The other thing is uh, we talked about reaching out to other centers and talking about it. I tried to call Upton, but they were closed. The other thing I'd like to do is set up in a meeting with their with their director, acting director, I guess it is, to discuss their building plans, what went well, what didn't go well. And once mm -hmm. I have those meetings set, I'll, it's going to be to their schedule, probably during the daytime because they're open during the day. But yeah. I'll share it with the committee if anybody wants to come along and join me. I'm going to use it to their schedule rather than ours. If there's a day that's particularly bad for you, let me know. But I think there's a couple other ones that I want to also take a look at. We may go back to Bellingham. And we may, there's another one, a new one that's in the area. So we might have two or three along the way. So that Which as is we the do new this, one in the area? I think I found another one I did an explore. I forgot the name. Right? There's a Wilming, Wilmingham or Wilming something. Uh, Wilmington Senior Center. There's a town of Wilmington, Mass. I don't have no idea where it's at. The profile might be similar to ours, but uh, sort you know, of uh, north of Boston. My daughter lives there. Oh, okay, far. <laughs> but we may there might be some learnings there, depending on the size of the town. I don't know enough about well, it. But yeah, what I'm what what I just heard there was that Mike's going to go up and scope everything out. <laughs> I'm going to send a Good spy one. in, Lonnie. I'll send my daughter up. There you go. Is she gonna? Is she won't be back from where? <laughs> Dif different daughter. This everything? one's available. Oh, okay. There you go. Have her scope it out for us. Uh, just want the floor plans and the cost. <laughs> but as I get this information, I'll let you know. I'm going to try to go visit a couple of places. It's more information for us to go. 
And I think it's important to know that Upton's cost, you know, 12.4, 12.8 million dollars, depending on what document I read. And they're only a few thousand square feet larger. Uh, and they but don't it's have a multiple. It's a multiple building. I mean, it contains the library. It does. And the senior. I mean, that's like the equivalent of two buildings. It is. But and I think Upton is a little bit more wealthy than we are. Yeah, I think. I see a few they, heads nodding. They, well, they also have more. They're bigger. They have a bigger population. So their base is about larger number of households. Businesses, things like that. But anyway, uh, that's another, maybe by next meeting, I'll have some things nailed down. But I want to okay. go explore that. I think it's information for us to have going forward. Okay, I have nothing else. Anybody else have any new business or anything they want to discuss? No, just give us the date of the next meeting, please. Next meeting next Tuesday, which would, would be, be the 23rd. The 23rd. Mm -hmm. How is that for everyone? Isn't it the 23rd? I'm open. Yep. And that'll Sorry. be at 630 same time police station with mm -hmm. uh, Mike with Mike Petrovic and John presenting. And I think that's the primary primary goal of that meeting. All right. OK, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry, guys. Aye. See you later. Good night. Thank Bye. you all. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.